Thanks, Scott, and I'd like to thank the uh, LSI folks for uh, inviting us, inviting me to this uh, really prestigious uh, conference. So I have a lot to cover, so I'm going to get, I'm going to dive right in. As Scott mentioned, um, my name is Lee Sean Eklog, and I'm the uh, chairman and CEO of PavMed. Um, some disclaimers. So who are we? Um, we are a NASDAQ-listed, highly differentiated, multi-product, commercial stage medical device company. We were founded in 2014 by a team of successful entrepreneurs, including myself and uh, two other uh, members of the company. We have a highly diversified and expanding portfolio of innovative products that are designed to address unmet needs across a broad range of clinical conditions. So we have chosen to be agnostic to clinical specialty as we seek to expand our portfolio. Uh, we have, um, our, if you add up all of our, our products that are in the pipeline, including those in the commercial stage, uh, we have market opportunities totaling multi-billion dollars. Two commercial products, several others that are near term to commercialization. We have a proven business model uh, that we honed prior to this company that's focused on efficient and cost-effective paths to commercialization. And we have a robust IP portfolio of uh, 100 issued or pending patents and patent applications across 17 families. Uh, we also have two subsidiaries, just in case, um, just to clarify certain things. PavMed is the parent company. That company is public, trades on NASDAQ as PAVM. We have two subsidiaries, which are related to uh, licensing agreements that we've executed over the last couple of years. Lucid Diagnostics, which I'll spend a lot of time on, uh, and Solus Diagnostics, which is a, um, a more recent uh, spinoff. Uh, we own about 80% of both of those. Just a, uh, one slide here briefly on our cap table. As I mentioned, um, if you go through it, uh, we're a publicly traded stock on NASDAQ, PAVM. We have a publicly traded warrant, PAVMZ. Uh, about 13 to 14% of those are held by insiders. Um, our market cap as of Friday was $109 million, fully diluted using the treasury method of about $130 million. Uh, that's up a bit today. Our manager team has, has deep experience both in the clinical and, and um, um, industry side of things. Uh, myself and uh, Dr. Guzman in the middle there is a chief medical officer, our cardiac surgeons, and we founded, co-founded this company after some successful entrepreneurial activities uh, prior to 2014. And we've been able to recruit a, a rem remarkable management team with uh, deep experience. So this slide is uh, really an overview. I don't expect you to, to dive into the details, but just give you a little bit of an overview of our portfolio to date. Uh, we have six products. We actually just announced eSecure this morning in conjunction with this conference uh, that are focused on gastroenterology, minimally invasive interventions, and infusion therapy. And we also have an emerging innovations group where we constantly are getting access to uh, clinic innovations that come out of academic medical centers. And as we as those rise to the top, um, also our own innovations, as they rise to the top, we bring them into our por portfolio as we did with eSecure today. I do not have time to talk about every one of these products, so I'm gonna focus very heavily on the GI uh, products here. They're all, they're all uh, uh, synergistic. I didn't briefly mention Carpex because we have some uh, timelines coming up, but I'd be happy to talk about any of these afterwards in our, uh, in our networking session. So just real briefly about Carpex, for those of you who know the company, this has been a product that we introduced from the founding of the company. It's a device to uh, treat carpal tunnel syndrome in a minimally invasive way. Uh, just briefly about the device itself, you can see that on the bottom right there, uh, the two key elements are a balloon and, a, and cutting electrodes. The entire thing is a disposable device that treats carpal tunnel syndrome. M many of you know it's a common condition where there's scarring of the ligament at the base of the hand and trapping the median nerve. The balloon serves to create anatomic separation in that space and tension the ligament. And the cutting electrodes are radio frequency and they really mimic surgical cutting blades and we've demonstrated in extensive animal work that they do so with almost no thermal spread with really good protection of the surrounding critical elements. Very short burst of RF energy precisely cuts the ligament and relieves uh, the nerve compression. Um, this is a sequence of how the procedure is performed. You can see on the upper left, there's a wire that's inserted under the ligament. You can actually position it nicely by fluoroscopy. You can see the electrodes there. When the balloon is inflated with contrast, it's oversized for the tunnel. So you can see a narrowing waist there, indicating that it's within this tightened carpal uh, tunnel. A side view can confirm that the electrodes are sitting anteriorly uh, with the nerves posteriorly. And then upon activating, the ligament gets uh, cut and you can actually see the balloon go from that wasted um, configuration to a cylindrical con configuration. Uh, we have completed a um, 510K clinical safety study. We've been active with the FDA now for a couple of years. 
Uh, that study met its target follow-up as well as both of its primary endpoints, safety and effectiveness, and the uh, resubmission is pending. We're uh, close to getting that back to the FDA. We look forward to them hopefully doing a final review on that and getting this on the market. And we have multiple issued and pending patents on this. So moving on to uh, the esophageal space, I'm going to talk about ESOGARD and ESOCHECK, which are two products that we licensed from Case Western University back in 2018. Uh, these are complementary technologies that are designed uh, to facilitate the diagnosis of non-dysplastic and dysplastic Barrett's esophagus. They're precursors to highly lethal adenocarcinoma of the esophagus, as well as um, cancer itself. And these arise in patients who have chronic uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, the disease here you can see it starts off with gastroesophageal reflux disease, or commonly known as heartburn. It progresses to a benign condition called non-dysplastic Barrett's esophagus, which is a transformation of the lower lining, lining of the esophagus from exposure to acid. That can become dysplastic or precancerous uh, over time, and then eventually evolve into adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. Uh, GERD is extremely common, tens of millions of patients, depending on how you want to categorize them, at least 10 to 20 that are high risk. Uh, Barrett's is also very common, millions of patients, about 5 to 10 percent of high-risk patients get GERD, about 2 percent progress to dysplastics, and the reason we're here is because esophageal adenocarcinoma is one of the fastest growing cancers and remains very deadly with uh, less than 20 percent mortality. The uh, setup here is perfect in that the American College of, Ga of Gastroenterology guidelines recommend screening in high-risk GERD patients. Anybody who has over five years of GERD, 50-year-old, white, male, uh, are candidates for screening, which I suspect if we asked the question, if I had time, we'd get um, several folks here. A lot of us do have occasional heartburn. Um, the, the standard screening methodology is upper endoscopy. The problem with that is invasive, it's costly, and at the end of the day, only uh, less than 10% of patients who should be getting screened are getting screened. Uh, so there's a need for a wide uh, a, a tool, a non-invasive tool to do widespread screening. Um, there's this missed opportunity. Patients who get cancer, most of them never knew they had Barrett's going in. And so uh, there's an opportunity to save lives through improved screening here. Uh, there's one other product on the market, Cytosponge by Medtronic, uh, which is partnered with a non-proprietary uh, immunohistochemical study um, uh, test. Um, just say straight out that we do not think this is a solution to the unmet need that does not provide a protected sample and its sensitivity and specificities in, public, in public, published uh, data is not sufficient for widespread screening. Um, our tools are the um, uh, ESOCheck device, which is an FDA cleared rapid office based two to three minute procedure, provides targeted sampling of where the Barrett's occurs, which is always in the lower esophagus, and prevents dilution and contamination of cells. Uh, here's a brief video showing uh, the procedure being performed. Uh, again, it's done in an office setting. There's a balloon that swabs the lower esophagus, grabbing cells along the way. When the balloon is deflated, the cells are pulled into this capsule, so for the rest of the way out, they're protected from contamination, and they're sent off to uh, have a test performed on them. ESOGARD is the assay that's associated with ESO ESOCheck. It's a <coughs> It's an NGS-based molecular assay of methylated markers, 31 sites on two genes. It's currently available and being commercialized as a laboratory-developed test. Um, and the published data in a 400-patient study shows greater than 90% sensitivity and specificity in detecting both Barrett's and everything along the spectrum towards cancer. We have a CPT billing code. We're working with the Medicare contractors now for coverage and pricing. And this is subject to multiple issues of patents as well. So this is commercially available. We're out there marketing it to GIs, and we're having a great deal of success in getting GIs to uh, gastroenterologists to adopt this. Uh, we are also pursuing an IVD, which is uh, so that we can get a registered, FDA-registered um, uh, IVD in vitro diagnostic test that combines both ESOGARD and ESOCheck. Uh, we recently received breakthrough designation for the, from the FDA on this. And um, we have two clinical trials that have launched. We're expecting to enroll our first patient any day, ESOGARD BE1 and 2, uh, which will support an FDA PMA submission, uh, hopefully in 18 to 24 months. Finally, uh, this is the first time we're introducing this device. We announced it this morning. We're also developing a device to ablate Barrett's esophagus once it's diagnosed. So going back to this, to this progression from uh, GERD, non-dysplastic, dysplastic, and adenocarcinoma, um, the reason why it's so important to screen patients is that there's an opportunity to intervene at the non-dysplastic stage before they develop cancer. Uh, the ACG recommends ablation. Uh, the current uh, technologies, uh, this is the Medtronic Barracks device, are complex. They require a console, 
um, usually thirty to $100,000 or more. Uh, we've developed a technology that requires no capital equipment. It works through the endoscope working port, creates high balloon uh, temperatures at the distal esophagus, taking the blade to the esophagus, and has the potential to provide a safer, more efficient, and cost-effective um, uh, way to treat dysplastic Barrett's. And of course, it's synergistic to the technologies we're already uh, moving into the market, Isogard and Isocheck, uh, which are diagnostic tools, and this will be therapeutic. So uh, thank you very much for attention. I look forward to talking to, um, to you in the um, afternoon sessions. Thank you.